I've recently spent a few weeks on Fred Olsen's Balmoral in Norway. Regardless of the ship, if you're planning a trip on Fred Olsen Cruise Lines in Norway, this is the video for you. Regular viewers will know I spent a lot of time on Fred Olsen ships, and I've now been on all three in the fleet. Because I've made videos about some of the trips, including tours of all three ships, I do get a lot of questions about the Fred Olsen experience in Norway. So I've decided to make this video to answer as many of them as I can. From the itineraries to the onboard experience, this is what to expect on a Fred Olsen cruise in Norway. Plus, I'll share loads of tips and tricks to help you get the most out of your trip, from taking advantage of the onboard technology to tips about the cabins and what to pack for a trip to a country with notoriously changeable weather. Just before I get started, do please check out the website that accompanies this YouTube channel, lifeinnorway.net to discover all things Norway in English. Norway itineraries. There are three types of Fred Olsen itineraries in Norway. Shorter fjords trips, typically four to eight nights. Northern lights trips in the autumn or winter, which can be eight to 10 nights. Or longer one-off itineraries, usually in the summer to the north of Norway for the midnight sun. It's the itineraries that attracts me to Fred Olsen more than anything else. All three ships are relatively small compared with modern ships, and this means they can get into far more interesting ports than many other ships. For example, they can get under the Hardanger Bridge to reach Ulvik and Eidfjord, sail the inside passage of Norway to take in the Rövik Strait, the Seven Sisters mountain range, and even the spectacular glacier Svartisen. And they can turn in narrow fjords, allowing scenic visits to waterfalls. Take all these things into account when comparing itineraries with other lines. Another interesting thing to note about the Norway itineraries is that many leave from regional British ports, including Liverpool, Resyth near Edinburgh, and North Shields near Newcastle. The Fred Olsen Fleet All three Fred Olsen cruises ships are used on Norway itineraries. All three are older ships that have been beautifully restored and looked after, but there are some differences, so make sure you look into the ship before committing to an itinerary. Both Borealis and Boletta share the same physical design as former Holland America ships. The decor is slightly different and there is an extra pool on Boletta, but aside from that they're essentially identical. Balmoral, however, is a completely different ship. It is older, it feels smaller, and has an old-fashioned design, albeit with some great features like this beautiful deck space at the aft of the ship. What all three have in common is an absence of many modern facilities you'd expect on the latest cruise ships. This means they feel more like ships and less like floating resorts. Their older age and smaller size also means you should expect some noise in the cabins at night and more movement than on bigger modern vessels. The onboard experience. Despite me being a fan of these cruises, I will say that Fred Olsen is not a cruise line for everyone. Generally speaking, the older, smaller ships and traditional approach on board offered by Fred Olsen attracts a more mature traveller that prefers the way cruising used to be. If you're expecting a ship full of modern facilities like VR arcades and water slides, this is definitely not the line for you. That's not to say there's nothing to do on board. Far from it, in fact. There's a strong focus on enrichment, especially related to the destinations. Sea days in particular are packed with things to do, from talks in the main theatre to arts and crafts classes and cooking demonstrations. In the evening, there's a main show in the theatre every night. This is sometimes from the onboard show team and sometimes from guest cabaret, which could be a singer, a magician, a comedian, for example. In Norway, I would say the primary entertainment is the landscapes. Something else to bear in mind is dress code. Fred Olsen do have formal nights, typically one or two per week, so you can expect two or three on a typical cruise to Norway. To dine in the main restaurants on formal night, you'll need to be in formal clothing, but this does not apply if you want to eat in the buffet restaurant or even in the specialty restaurants. It also doesn't apply in the theatre. So although you won't miss out by not taking formal clothing, you will feel a little out of place as the typical Fred Olsen audience does embrace formal night. My advice, take something smart, even if it's not a full tuxedo or an evening gown, just so you don't feel completely out of place. Technology tips. 
For a lot of people, a cruise is a chance to disconnect from modern life, and that's absolutely fine, of course. But for some people, staying connected is important, whether, like me, you have a business to run, or you simply want to stay in touch with friends and family. I do have a few technology-related tips that will enhance your cruise experience with Fred Olson, no matter how tech-savvy you are or how disconnected you want to be. First of all, the Wi-Fi. Now, many reviews of Fred Olson's onboard internet aren't very good, and that's because, well, it didn't used to be very good. But that has changed completely. The first time I tried the onboard Wi-Fi, it was basically unusable. But now Starlink has been installed on all three ships and it has transformed what the internet is like to use. I recently spent three weeks on the Balmoral and the Wi-Fi was excellent. I was able to work just as well as I would at home, even when we were halfway across the North Sea and even when we were on the way to Svalbard. One thing to bear in mind is that video streaming is not included in the packages right now. And that means I wasn't able to do any YouTube related work, but I could do everything else I needed to do without a problem. Now, bear in mind that the Wi-Fi is expensive, but if you need it, I think it's worth the money. The best value is to buy the longer duration packages, but on a Norway itinerary, you might not need them. Bear in mind that you can access mobile internet while in ports and likely when you're doing scenic cruising along the fjords. So if all you want to do is stay in touch with friends and family, consider whether you need the Wi-Fi at all. Now, even if you don't pay for the onboard Wi-Fi or you have mobile data roaming enabled, you can still access the Fred Olsen portal. And this is something I highly recommend you do. On a recent cruise, I saw a few people go to guest services every day to ask for a copy of their onboard account. That's just not necessary right now. There are two ways to get this information without queuing at reception. First of all, the cabin TV, which I'll talk more about later. But there's also the onboard portal. While Fred Olsen doesn't yet have an app, there is this portal that's available to everyone, even if you don't pay for a Wi-Fi package. You simply connect to the Wi-Fi network and you'll be presented with this portal. Here, you can view the status of your onboard account and access the daily planner. This is great if you've left the daily times in your cabin and you just want to quickly check what time an event starts. Or perhaps you want to check if you have any onboard credit left before you indulge in a cocktail. Cabin tips. On a cruise, some people spend a lot of time in their cabin. Other people, like me, just seem to sleep and shower in there and make the most of the rest of the ship during the day. Regardless of which type of cruiser you are, here are some tips to get the most out of your Fred Olsen cabin when visiting Norway. Power outlets could be either EU, UK or US type, depending on the ship and depending on the cabin. If you're bringing UK plugs, for example your phone charger, it's a good idea to bring an EU adapter too. That way you should be covered. As an older ship, there typically aren't any power sockets by the bed, so bear this in mind if you like to charge devices overnight. Your cabin is attended to twice daily. On embarkation day, your cabin steward will introduce themselves to you, and this is your chance to say hello, get to know them, share your schedule and your preferences for the rest of the trip. For example, you can let them know if you prefer cleaning earlier in the day or later in the morning, or any other needs you might have. Your cabin steward can also organise laundry for you. Personally, I like to use this service for suits and shirts, but it's a bit expensive for everyday clothes. On all three ships, there are self-serve laundries though, and the tokens are very cheap. You can also do ironing in here, although bear in mind the ironing boards are very busy in the hours before formal night. Even if you're not a TV person, it's worth taking some time to explore your cabin television once you've watched the mandatory safety video. As I mentioned earlier, the TV can be used to access your cabin account and other information about the ship and the cruise. There's also a selection of movies that changes every three months. Something else you can find on the TV is a live stream from the main theatre. This is great if you're feeling tired but don't want to miss out. Also, recordings of the enrichment talks are usually made and made available through the TV the following day. During the evening, your cabin steward will perform a turndown service, which includes a copy of the following day's Daily Times and a chocolate on the pillow. Read the Daily Times thoroughly as important information is shared in there, such as changes to the ship time, port information and so on. And of course, the full programme of activities for the following day. It's the best way to make sure you don't miss out on anything.
Finally, in some cabins, the air conditioning can be a bit strong. So I recommend to bring some moisturizer or at least some hand cream if you tend to suffer from dry skin. Food and drink tips. Fred Olsen's traditional approach to cruising extends to dining. There are two fixed times for dinner in the main dining rooms and you'll find your assignment in your cabin unless you've selected it beforehand. If your time doesn't suit you on a particular day, you can always eat in the buffet restaurant, which has open seating. The buffet gets busy at breakfast and on sea days at lunchtime, but remember you can always eat in the main dining room, which is often less hectic for breakfast and lunch. On the Borealis and Boleta, the poolside grill is a great alternative option. Unlike poolside grills on many lines, which are cheap and cheerful, offering grab and go options, the grill on Borealis and Boleta serves a more refined approach to poolside grill food cooked to order. On Balmoral, there is outside seating available in the buffet, together with the Avon and Spey restaurants. These offer terrific views on sunny days, yet it's something that many people miss. Even if you enjoy a traditional approach to dining, eating at the same table at the same time every night, be prepared to be a bit more flexible in Norway. On fjords cruises, the evenings often feature some of the very best scenery of the entire trip, whereas on Northern Lights itineraries, you'll want to be on alert in case the aurora comes out to play. Bring a flexible attitude to dining on Norway cruises. Colours and Tastes and Vasco are the two speciality restaurants available on all three ships and I highly recommend you try them both. They are just £10 each when booked in advance, and the food is fabulous. If you're feeling tired or a little under the weather, a room service menu is available, which, unlike many cruise lines, is free. It's different from the main menu, and the dishes are simpler, but the portions are generous, so this is a great alternative if you're tired, or maybe late back from an excursion. On all ships, tea and black coffee is available from the drinks stations in the buffet restaurants. But if you're a latte drinker, hot chocolate, or another warm barista drink, the Bookmark Cafe is the place for you. If you think you'll buy a hot drink at least once per day, the prepaid Bookmark Coffee Card is worth the investment. It gives you a discount on the overall cost and includes a bag of chocolates. If you're a drinker, consider the drinks package, which is one of the best value ones at sea. At the time of recording this video, the drinks package costs £25 per day when booked in advance which is the cost of a soft drinks package on some major cruise lines. The reason it's relatively cheap though is that it's restricted to just house beers, house wines and house spirits, plus the cocktail of the day. Finally, watch out for the food and drinks based events including the premium afternoon tea, Arkavit tasting, the martini experience and the cheese and wine evening. These are advertised on the screens around the ship and are enjoyable optional add-ons for your cruise. Packing tips. Now, I promised you some packing tips for a cruise to Norway with Fred Olsen. I've already shared the need to bring an EU adapter, for example. I'd also recommend bringing some seasickness medication if you're sailing out of high season. That's because the North Sea crossing can be rough at any time of year, but especially out of high season. So it's just better to be safe than sorry. Regardless of the time of year, pack rain clothes. Rain is common throughout the year in Norway and especially in the fjord region. It's also important to pack layers of clothing such as fleeces so you can easily warm up or cool down as and when you need to. Finally, waterproof and windproof outer layers are absolutely essential and they make all the difference, especially on winter cruises. General tips. Finally, I have some general tips to share for those of you planning a Fred Olsen trip to Norway. Use the time to learn a new skill or hobby. Fred Olsen itineraries are full of arts and crafts classes and enrichment talks. On longer itineraries, you'll find dance classes, bridge classes, and even ukulele lessons. The art studio on all three ships is an impressive space, and it's a sociable one too. If you're keen on joining excursions, book them in advance if you can, because the more popular ones, such as Husky Rides or Northern Lights Tours, do sell out in advance. If they're full, do sign up for the waitlist though, because people do drop out for all sorts of reasons. Plus, if the waitlist gets very long, then it's possible that a new tour might be able to be arranged. If you're still on the fence about whether a Fred Olsen cruise to Norway is right for you or not, check out this video next to see what the experience is like on a cruise to the Norwegian fjords 
in September.